All right, good morning and welcome to Studio Time with Deb, the online version. Today we are talking about burrs and it is a big topic. If you go through the burr catalog, there are so many burrs. There's different shapes and different sizes and different kinds and they're made out of different stuff. It is so hard to decipher what is going on. So I want to give you the basics first, what they're made of. There is high carbon steel ones. There are high speed steel, carbide, and diamond. Those are the four basic groups. Now, let me explain something to you that I found fascinating that I did not know until I did a lot of research on this. If it says high speed in the name, so in other words, it says high speed, high carbon drill. That is not high speed steel. That is not the same thing. So you have to look down and see what it's made of. High speed, when they say that in the name of it, so if they just call it high speed, um, uh, like I said, high speed vanadium drill. What that means is that that's a high carbon drill, has a little bit of vanadium in it, and it means that the burr shouldn't lose its temper when it's being, due, due to friction or heat, when it's being run and used at a normal, normal rate, okay? So you have to really search a little bit further. So let me talk to you about the different ones and why you would or wouldn't want different ones. So the high carbon steel, they often mix vanadium or titanium in with it. And the vanadium and, or, I'm sorry, tungsten, not titanium, tungsten. Um, so what that means when they mix those other metals in with the high carbon steel is that the flutes can be a little bit finer. So they can make really precise cuts. Those are the ones you'll see that have the really fine cuts on them. However, they need to be operated at pretty low speeds. They can load up more easily than other burrs and they are quicker, to, the quickest to lose their temper, to lose their sharpness, to lose their, um, they're gonna be the quickest to get destroyed. They're the cheapest burrs that are out there. Um, but they're probably not your primary choice unless, so what they're really good for is doing very, very fine refining. So if I wanted to cut a prong, but I've already cut the main part of it and I just want to refine it, I want to make it a little bit nicer, I might consider the high carbon steel because it's got finer teeth. The high speed steel, which is often labeled HSS, so that one has really good edge retention. It also should be operated at lower speeds, but it'll generally hold up pretty well at higher speeds. Edge retention is much better than the high carbon steel. Um, so it'll, they'll, they'll last a little bit longer. They're going to be a little bit more expensive. The carbide burrs, we typically don't use. Carbide is stronger than steel, but it's also extremely brittle. And because it's brittle, it tends to chip or shatter a lot more easily. And a lot of times what we're doing is, um, it's hard enough on it that we don't, we, we really don't want the carbide birds. What, what we want is the high speed steel is normally what we're after. Carbide birds are best used at a high speed with a very light touch, very low pressure. So, so when we're looking, the high speed steel is what we're after. Diamond burrs. Diamond burrs, there's two basic flavors. One is the, the and you've probably noticed this, I've always seen diamond burrs, some are really cheap and some are really expensive. Well, the really cheap ones are cheap because the diamonds are bonded to the outside of a steel shaft. So that means that once you have worn through those diamonds or once you've overheated it and they've popped off or whatever, all you have is a steel shaft, you have nothing left. So then you throw it away. The expensive ones, have diamond impregnated throughout the, the burr. And so what that means is that as you're grinding and you grind some of it away, that there's new little diamonds there to do the cutting. And that's why they're expensive because it's throughout the, the piece. 
So they'll stand up quite a bit longer than the, um, than the ones that are just, have the diamonds glued on the outside. Is that so, what centered means, Deb? Centered, yes. Yeah. Centered means that, that it has them all throughout. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I am going to start the slideshow. All right. This is a Burr comparison chart from Rio, and you can find this on their website. And I just wanted to show it to you just so that you see it. But you can also, um, like I said, it's on their website and you can find it. So the one on the left is the, um, is the high carbon steel. And the one on the right is the high speed steel. And you can see the one on the right, it's got a little bit, can you see the cut along here? That helps get the chips and stuff out of there. And that's again from Rio, I just wanted to show it to you. This again is from Rio, it's a burr materials chart about which ones to use on, on what materials. For the most part, what we work on, the high speed steel is the preferable one for us. Carbide is great, they tend to be pricey. So I wanna to talk to you about storing burrs. This is a burr storage box that you can buy and you can buy them. They can have as few as 16 holes and as many as I've seen ones with 200 holes. When they come, they come numbered like this, typically you know, one to, and I don't know why it stops at 34 when it's got 36 holes, I guess they got tired. But, um, but I buy these little burr boxes because it's a good way for me to keep my burrs organized. I have a lot of burrs and it keeps them organized. However, the numbering system of one through 34 or whatever means nothing to me. So what I do, the first thing I do when I get these is I take sandpaper and I sand those off, all the numbers that they put on there. I sand them all off and I put my own numbers on there that are actually the size of the burr or the bit that I'm using. And that way, I know every time I don't have to measure each and every one. I know that I put the 1.6 millimeter burr back in the 1.6 millimeter hole and all is well. And then I have everything where, where it belongs and where I know where it is and what it is. I also write on the top of my burr boxes because I have a whole bunch of boxes. They all look the same. Um, or similar, but I've got the cup burrs, I've got ball burrs, I've got 70 degree heart burrs, we'll talk about that in a minute. I've got the single cut cylinder burrs. Um, so I know what I've got and I know that the guess when box is setting burrs. And I just write on my box what they are. This is a setting burr. So I'm gonna go through the burrs now, the different kinds of burrs. I'm gonna talk to you about what they are and what we do with them, what they're used for. This one is a setting burr and it's used to cut seat, seats for stones. Uh, used a lot in tube setting, flush setting, prong setting. It's great for tube setting because it helps, um, because it has the straight walls right here. These, these walls are straight. And so what it does is that it helps you stay straight in the tube. And a heart burr that I'll show you in a minute could also be used but it doesn't have this straight wall here. It comes up to here and then cuts back. And because of that, it's a little bit more difficult to keep it straight in the tube when you're, when you're doing um, grinding a seat for tube setting. This is what mine look like. And I have them from really large to really small. I don't, so one of the things I wanna talk to you about is these can get really pricey when you start buying sets of these things. For the most part, unless you're gonna be doing a lot of stone setting and a lot of different sizes, you probably don't need a whole set. You probably need a partial set. You probably only need to go from five millimeter down to three millimeter. Whatever it is that the stones that you're gonna be setting, that's the range that you need. You can get a box that's appropriate for that. You can buy the burrs individually as opposed to buying a set. Sometimes you can buy smaller sets depending on who's got them and, and who's offering what, but, um, but I don't recommend necessarily buying large sets of these. Um, I, I think that you need to stop and really think about your use and what you would do with them. This is a heart burr. 
So you can see that up here, instead of coming straight down here, it cuts back like this. Okay, heart burrs come in several flavors. Um, this one is a 90 degree heart burr. This to this is supposed to be 90 degrees. This one is a 70 and this one is a 45. And the reason we have different, different uh, angles on the burr is because our stones are different. If you look at faceted stones, they're not all cut the same. Some of them are very shallow, some of them are very deep. And so that's why we have different shaped heart burrs or different angles of heart burrs. This is a heart burr set. 70 degree is the most common. Uh, it's the one that's kind of standard in the industry. If you're going to buy a set, I would recommend the 70 degree. 45 and 90 are not, um, they're not so standard. It's not that you won't find stones that fit that. It's just that they're not a standard. This is a ball burr. If there's one thing you're going to buy a set of, get the ball burrs. Ball burrs are amazingly useful. Um, they can enlarge holes, they deburr holes, they refine stone settings, you can do carving with them. There, a lot of people use them for the initial seat on a, on a flush setting. Uh, I use them sometimes to grind out, uh, to refine stone settings. So it, I use them to grind out the areas where pointed stones would go, where the points go into prongs. I use them to clean out uh, bezel settings or other places where I need to get in and clean out something tiny. And they come in a wide range of sizes. Um, the tiny ones, the 0.4 millimeter that seems like it would be useless is actually very useful because it can get down into tiny, tiny little areas and clean things out. Notice again, I sanded the, their numbers off and put my numbers on so that I know which ones I have where. This is a cylinder burr. Um, it's also called a rotary file or a ring file. Um, this one is a little one, but they come really big. I'll show you a big one in a minute. This one is a single cut. So it's got cuts just going down the side. Um, I used this one a lot, uh, a, a lot. Well, I use this one a fair amount actually. Comes in tapered or straight and a single cut or a cross cut, which I'll show you in a minute. It's great for enlarging holes. So this is the one that I use when I'm doing tube setting and I've soldered a tube onto something and I've drilled a hole in it and then I want to enlarge that hole to be even with the inside of the tube. I will use a cylinder burr to do that. So I get the largest cylinder burr that'll fit up inside the hole and then I make it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and then I'll go to a larger cylinder burr and I'll keep doing that. And I use the large one so I'm not making lots of little itty bitty cuts when I'm doing it. Uh, it's great for cleaning the interior of a bezel, either step bezel or a uh, regular bezel. This is a tapered one. You can see it's smaller at the top than the bottom. I don't use the tapered ones very much. I mostly use the straight ones with the single cut. Uh, this is a single cut set. This is probably worth getting a set of, but I would get, I would not get the single cut. I would get the cross cut, which is this one. And you can see the difference. This one has teeth cut in both directions. And it's more aggressive, absolutely. But I like that because I can get done with things faster. This is a burr set and they're not expensive. From, they're from Rio. Um, it's not expensive to get a um, cross cut cylinder burr set. So I wanted to show you this. This one in, back here in the back, this is a carbide drill or a carbide burr. And it's black, you can see it. It's kind of set up, I think it's set up for woodworking. It's huge shank. I can barely get it in the flex shaft and it's a huge bit. You can see it's probably an inch and a quarter long. Um, so it's very aggressive. Um, you can see some of these too. This one up front here is very coarse. These are cross cut. This is a really big cross cut uh, burr. So is this one, a really big one. This is a cup burr. Cup burrs are to round the ends of wires and some people use them on ear wires or on uh, rivets or prongs. Um, I'm not a fan of them on prongs. Uh, I 
think it leaves the prong a little bit undercut, which I don't really like. But, uh, but a lot of people do use them. And they, I used them for a long time on um, when I was making the stainless steel pasta servers. Uh, the little claws that came down that would grab the pasta, I would round the end of those. Now, because I was working on stainless steel, I went through cupfers of a certain size, something fierce. I would order them by the dozen. But they rounded the end of the stainless steel just beautifully. So they're really nice, even the bigger ones for rounding ends of wires. Uh, this is, you can get a set. I would not recommend a set. I would recommend that if you're going to use it for ear wires or something, you figure out which one is the ear wire size, which is going to be about a 2.3. No, not too big. It's going to be about a 1.2. Um, or you, if you're going to do rivets, you figure out what size is the common one you're doing and then buy those. I, you don't need a whole set. These are, they're pricey for a set. That's what they look like. Don't overheat these. Tendency is to put them on the end of a wire and just grind and grind and grind and grind. Don't do that. This is a cone burr. It is good for enlarging things, deburring holes, um, doing some carving. This is an inverted cone burr. It's good for making undercuts. This is ideal for cleaning out a step bezel. If you soldered the step in a step bezel and you got too much solder in there and the stone won't seat properly, if you get one of these little burrs in there and you grind right where that, the, on the inside where the square wire and the bezel meet, this is the burr you want. It'll take it out, shouldn't hit the wall of the, um, the bezel. It, they work great. This is called a flame burr or a bud burr. And some people use this as the initial burr for a flush setting. These I don't find as useful for many things. Um, I probably would not, I probably would avoid this one. I just, I don't think they're very useful. Sometimes they come in sets if you're gonna order a whole set of something. That's another one. This is a wheel burr. And they can be flat or they can be rounded on the sides. This one is flat. And I use a wheel burr for most, I use it for carving. Um, this one is slightly rounded. And this one is quite rounded. This is a knife edge burr, and you can see it's got a very sharp little edge on it, but it does fan out. It's not the same as a saw. Uh, there, there's some that have little saw teeth on them and then are plain. This one um, does do the cutting even on the other surfaces, so you can kind of lay it down a little bit. I use this one for carving. It's also good for grinding stone seats or for doing scoring on sheet metal. There's another, a better view. This one is called a Kraus burr. I use this one a lot when I was doing um, metal clay greenware. I would take lace and make molds of it and then carve out all the little holes. This is a very aggressive little burr. Um, it has that sharp little point on it. I can't even tell you how many times I put this one into my finger. Um, this one, you need to be careful with this burr. It will dig out holes. It will uh, remove material fast. They're small. They tend to be very, very small, uh, but they're very aggressive. This is my random burr box, and I kind of wanted to show it to you just so you can see some of the flame burrs. There's some rounded ones. There's some, some of these I got when, um, you know, if you, if you buy a set or something, sometimes they'll come with other burrs. I want you to take notice of these guys. See, they only have three giant teeth on them. See these? These are also very aggressive. These are for wax. These are, these are wax burrs. And then um, I'll show you some other wax burrs in a little bit. This one up front, this one is a wax burr. But you can also use wax burrs on plastic or wood or other things that, um, that are soft, that are relatively soft. I would never use these on metal, uh, but the rest of them in here I would. 
And you can see there's, this one is a big knife edge. This one is rounded. Um, these are all rounded ones. So I just kind of have them grouped and I have them in here. And then I, when I need them, I can sort through it. There's another view. This is the set that I put together. This is not a set that's commercially available, but I put this together for carving. Um, some of you have taken carving class with me and I'm gonna show you some samples of carving and what I do. But I wanted you to see the different burrs. So I have a ball burr, a cylinder burr. This is an inverted cone, a knife edge, a rounded wheel edge, another ball burr and another cylinder burr. This is a small wheel, a tiny wheel, a ball burr, and this one is a heart burr. And then there you can see them up a little bit closer. And what I do with these, there's the other set, is this. So these, these are carved pieces. And I use um, all those burrs that you just saw, the inverted cone here, ball burr here. Um, what else can I tell you? Separating discs I use also on these. Uh, this the is, mm -hmm. What gauge is the wire for the ring? I was using a four gauge and six gauge half round, and then I was using a wide low dome. So some of these are half round and some of these are low dome. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And these are earrings that are also made with carving using burrs. The only other thing than a burr that I used is a separating disc. These are Florentine or, um, uh, what are they called? Florentine wheels, I'll just call them that. Um, so what Florentine wheels are, so a lot of times what we do is when we're gonna make a Florentine finish, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, people can use gravers. You can use hand gravers and do it. The Florentine wheel is meant to eliminate the graver so that you're doing this much faster and it's not so much hand strength required. This is a Florentine finish on a wedding band and they come in coarse and fine. That's the wheels, let me go back. The top wheel is fine and the bottom wheel is coarse. And I don't think I have a middle one. These are pricey wheels. Um, that's a finer finish, cross hatched. That's a coarser finish. These are wax carving tools, wax burrs. And the wax burrs you can see are much, much coarser. Uh, typically they will chatter if you try to use them on metal. They will, um, they'll leave a really nasty surface. They are meant pretty much strictly for use in, uh, with soft materials, with wax, wood, plastic, something relatively soft so that you don't, um, they're, they're just gonna catch on the metal. Their teeth spacing is way too big. And that's it, I think, for the burrs that I have for you. Now, I wanna talk to you about using your burr with lubrication. You need to do that. Burrs need lubrication. And I recommend that you use something like Burr Life or ProCut or Cut Lube or there's all kinds of different brands out there. But something, and what you need, what that does is that it adds, it's a lubricant for the, the burr, but it's also, um, I, I guess it's also a, a, a time when you take the burr away and you can touch it to the piece, but it lets it cool off a little bit. Just let it cool off a little bit. So we don't wanna run our burrs too hot. You don't wanna run them too fast. You don't want high pressure on them. And you really don't want to run them where you're running them at speed and you just leave them in place. Um, if your burr starts smoking, that is not good. Don't do that. Uh, that is way too hot. It's gonna lose its temper. And when it loses its temper, it's gonna lose its edge and then it won't cut anymore. So you need to be a little bit careful with these. They're, they're, they, they can't get overheated. If they get overheated, you're going to destroy them. Um, when you're using a diamond burr, you really want to use water as your lubricant. Water is a great lubricant for that. And you can either drip it on, you can work in a wet pan, um, you can do whatever with that, but that'll help keep the, the little diamonds from getting eaten up. 
And as far as burrs go, today is a short lecture. As far as burrs go, that's it. That's what I have for you. I do want to talk to you one more thing before we go, and that is drill bits. So drill bits also make a difference for which ones that we use. And there's several things that, that um, alter how drill bits work. One of them is the angle of the point on a drill bit. And the other one is the fluting on the drill bit, whether it's tight, whether it's loose, how big it is, what angle it is. So what we want are the drill bits that are called bright. They're the ones that are silver colored. I know that you've seen drill bits that are black and some are yellow and some are blue and I've seen all kinds of different drill bits out there. We want the silver colored ones and we want the ones that have the 35 degree point on the end. They're called jobbers, uh, jobbers drill bits. And they're pretty much the basic ones. We want the high speed steel, HSS, high speed steel jobbers drill bits. That's the ones that Rio sells uh, in that black case, the Irwin. And if you shop around, you can usually get a better price than Rio. But uh, I do recommend getting a set of zero to 60 of the drill bits. And I also recommend that at the time that you get a, um, a drill gauge, zero to 60 numbered drill gauge. And that way, if they fall, fall on the floor, you can figure out which is which. You can also double check them. Um, but that's, and that's a really handy way also to check your wire to see what size hole you really want. So that's drill bits and burrs for you today. Do I have any questions? Yeah. Do you, mm -hmm. do you have a, a supply list that you could give us? I don't have a supply list because it's so complicated because it really depends on the size of the stones and whatnot that you're working with. So what I recommend that you do is I recommend the high speed steel for the most part, for, for most of you, that's going to be the better choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for the high speed steel, which is HSS, which is not high speed, high carbon drill bit, high speed vanadium, high speed tungsten, mm -mm. high speed steel is what you're looking for. And, and I don't know why they mislabel it that way, probably to confuse all of us. Um, but so that's what you're looking for. And then the size range really, really depends on what you do. So if you are only setting flush stones that are two millimeter, then you only need those few drill bits that are in that range, right? But if you're going to be doing tube settings of anywhere from one millimeter to five millimeter, then you need all of those in that range. So mm -hmm. it really depends on what you're after. Um, I think that for, for my purposes, the setting burrs are probably the number one critical need because it's very difficult to make anything else do for that. When I'm grinding out a seat for a tube setting, it's very difficult for me to make do with something else that would, would work for that. Um, I was at, oh, excuse me. Yeah, so the my second purchase would be um, probably a small portion of heart burrs and then ball burrs. Mm -hmm. So those three are the, the main ones that I would deal with. The cylinder burrs are not expensive and I think they're well worth it. The rest of them, I, you know, not so much. I mean, I, you may have a need for them. You may, the inverted cone, if you, one inverted cone that could dig out channels and stuff for you. Uh, if you're gonna be doing carving, then I, I can put that little set up um, but the carving is you can really use any burrs for carving those are just ones that I came up with uh, but you can use any burrs that you've got at all so anything will do the carving um, so it, it depends on your needs so I, I mean I I can't really specify what you need if you talk to me about you know something in particular I can give you some recommendations I was but, actually just thinking a supply list in general the, all the different, or suppliers, I should say, places that you buy various things for your jewelry needs. Oh, so the burr boxes, I did do a little bit of research on burr boxes. Uh, Rio has one, but I think it only holds 20 burrs. And the Stuller has the best ones, but I know a lot of you can't buy from Stuller. Um, I found some on eBay that were reasonable. Jets, J-E-T-S, 
tools, uh, they had good prices on their burr boxes. Um, yeah, so I saw that. And what else? For burrs, I get burrs at Stuller and I get burrs at Rio. Um, I think it, it doesn't really matter if you're looking, but you got to look for that high speed steel. I think that's the key for the better burrs. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a, a lot of burrs that I've inherited. Mm -hmm. And when you talked about the wax burrs, how do I tell which ones are wax burrs? Wax burrs are just really coarse. If it makes your metal chatter every time you try to use it, then they're wax burrs. They're, they're too coarse for metal. Um, they're, they're much coarser. You'll, you, you can usually see that they are. You know, I inherited a lot of the ones that I have too. And a lot of those really strange shaped ones, I just never use them. I just, I, I don't know. Well, they're all together in boxes, you know, mixed together. And I've, they came from various places and I've mixed them up through the years. And Yeah. You know, when you have ones like that, it's just a matter of looking at it and figuring out what's too coarse and what's not too coarse. If it's too coarse to grind the edge on a piece of metal uh, because it chatters and whatnot, then throw it in the wax, wax burr bucket. It's just, you know, it's too much. Uh, when you're using burrs on the edge of metal or anything, actually anytime you're using burrs on metal, you really should wear safety glasses mm -hmm. because you're throwing off little chips of metal and you really don't want those in your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to, you definitely need to be wearing safety glasses when you do that. And, um, and when you've got really coarse burrs, a lot of times it's going to throw off little metal chips that are big enough that if you are barefoot or something, you're going to get them in your feet. They're, they're little mm -hmm. chips of metal. You need to be careful. So, Question. You need the onion glasses, Deb. Yes. Mm -hmm. Onion glasses with the little cushions around the, the, the eye. Mm -hmm. They should be fine. I mean, they're safety impact glasses, right? And this, I mean, this isn't throwing anything at great speed. It's not like working on a lathe or something. It's, it's you know, throwing little itty bitty metal chips, but you don't want an itty bitty metal chip in your eye either, right? Qu <laughs> Question? Yeah. If you've, if you've misplaced a burr, or you don't know what size it is, you use your calipers yes. on, the outs on the outside edge of the blades, right? Yes, and you need to be careful because you really don't want to tear up your calipers, right? So you need to be a little bit gentle with the calipers when you're measuring burrs. Hey, question. Mm -hmm. Diamond burrs used to be, or I used to buy diamond burrs and they were excellent. Do you find that the newer diamond burrs are not like the old ones? Have they changed the formula or something? Or is there a good place to buy diamond burrs? The best place to buy diamond burrs is at a stained glass glass supply shop. Oh. Um, they have the better ones. Uh, you can also just, if you Google it, you'll figure it out. But you want the ones that have centered diamonds. It's S-I-N-T-E-R, centered. And what that means is that it's got the diamonds throughout the bit, rather than the ones that just have the diamonds bonded to the outside. So there's a lot of, you can get diamond um, bits and burrs from Harbor Freight. But I guarantee you, they are the bonded ones, and they're not bonded well. <laughs> so typically, I can use those for about 10 minutes, and they're gone. Uh, even if I'm really careful with them and really nice with them, they're just gone. And once you've gone through the diamond on the outer layer, then you've got nothing left, right? So um, I do use the diamond ones sometimes to make texture hammers and, and um, texture tools, but... I find that if I do have the better diamond ones, they hold up really well. Um, but the cheap ones, not so much. But even the diamond ones, the, the more expensive ones from Rio, don't seem to be as good as the old ones that I had. I, don't, I haven't bought any in a long time. And I would check to see if they're centered or if they're bonded. OK, thank you. I don't know. I mean, maybe Rio changed the pliers and went with bonded ones. Maybe they figured that people don't care and it doesn't matter. I don't know. Deb, mm -hmm. um, here in the LA area, there is Lasco Diamond Burrs, mm -hmm. and they have, have cinder on their website. You can, can order them there. That's L-L-A-S-C-O, no, right? L-A-S-C-O, yes. L-A-S-C-O. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they they are known for good, really good diamond birds. Yeah, They're they known are. for that. And um, yeah. I have a set from them that I've had forever that work really well. But and yeah, and they'll say that they're centered. So that that's what you're after. That's what you need. Yeah. Those are the good ones. Yeah. Anything else? Other questions? Question about using burrs um, to drill holes. Uh, I know usually you want to drill a hole first and then either widen it or shape it or whatever. Are there any burrs that you can drill holes with or should you just avoid that entirely? I typically avoid that, but if there's one that will do it, and, and I don't think it'll do it in metal, but it'll do it in anything that is a little bit softer, is that Krauss burr. So with the Krauss burr, what I used to do, I haven't done this in a long time, but I would take metal clay that was in the greenware state. So in other words, it was dry, but it was still, it hadn't been fired yet. It wasn't, it, it still is in like a ceramic almost. Um, and I would not make any holes first. I would just take the Krauss burr and go right through it and then make holes in it and then enlarge it with the Krauss burr. The Krauss burr is very aggressive and the point is very, very tiny. So if you even have the tiniest hole, you can get in there with a Krauss burr and uh, drill out or shape out whatever kind of hole you want. As far as it doing the initial hole, I don't think so. I don't think any of them will uh, because the teeth are so close together at the very tip. They don't, there's just not much, much in the way of teeth there. I think you need a drill bit. But you can start a tiny hole and get in there with that Krauss burr, no problem. Or one of the tinier um, cylinder burrs, either tapered or straight. Although, just thinking about it, you can get a hole in the metal by taking something like a um, the uh, inverted cone burr and turning it on its edge and cutting through the metal. I've cut all the way through. But now that makes a slit, not a hole. Uh, you can also use the knife edge. You could use a heart burr. You can go all the way through the metal with those. But that's making slits. That's not making holes not a round hole. So let's say you wanted to make a tiny little oval hole, maybe like a million of them. Would you, could you just make a bunch of little drill bit holes and then use the Krauss to ex extend yeah. them? Or would you just use the regular drill to extend them? Now using a drill on its side like that is really not what they're designed for. And I have, I, I'm bad about doing that, but you can snap a drill bit really easily that way. And it's not a good cutting surface. That's not, it's not designed to cut. The flutes are designed to remove the metal. They're not designed as cutting edges. So ideally, what, and what you really should do is that you would drill a bunch of little holes and then you could either use a Krauss burr or a cylinder burr and enlarge them to ovals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you. You could also use thicker metal and run it through the rolling mill and you get really nice ovals that way. There you go. But they would all be in the same direction. If you want ovals every which direction, then you got to do it by hand. Yes. Anything else? Any other questions? No, but thank you. That was great. Well, you're welcome. All right. Thank you for joining me today for Studio Time with Deb, the online version, and I will see you next week.